Hello and welcome back. To this point, we've really been focusing on a lot of the real fundamentals of AWS in terms of getting our account set up, setting up users, understanding policies and permissions, as well as exploring the backbone of the AWS infrastructure in the way of the virtual private cloud. In this section, we are going to move into more specific AWS services, which really become the daily drivers for most people and organizations. Specifically, we're going to now talk about Amazon S3. So let's dive into that now. So for AWS Essentials Section 4, the topic is Simple Storage Service, or S3. And in this section, we're going to cover topics that include introduction to S3, a pricing and cost overview, managing buckets, folders, and objects, uploading and downloading objects, storage classes, use cases, and cost, object life cycles, permissions, and object versioning. For this lesson, lesson one, we're going to start with S3 basics, and we're going to talk specifically about S3 definitions, components and structure, and a pricing and cost overview. So S3, or Simple Storage Service, is an online bulk storage service that you can access from almost any device. For the AWS definition, Amazon S3 has a simple web service interface that you can use to store and retrieve any amount of data at any time from anywhere on the web. It gives any user access to the same highly scalable, reliable, fast, inexpensive data storage infrastructure that Amazon uses to run its own global network of websites. The service aims to maximize benefits of scale and to pass those benefits on to users. So basically, this is Amazon's storage service where you can upload and store any type of files with almost unlimited storage capacity. And before we dive into more of the basics, let's just take a quick look over here at the console and see where to access S3. So down here under storage and content delivery, right here, the very first service listed is S3. And if you've never used S3 before, the first thing it's going to prompt you to do is to create a bucket. But before we do that, let's at least understand what a bucket is and what the various components are of S3. So as we just discussed in terms of the very basics, S3 being simple storage service, and it is AWS's primary storage service, and you can store any type of file in S3. It has several components being buckets, folders, and objects. And first for buckets, root level folders, and I'll explain that in a second, you create in S3 are referred to as buckets. Any subfolder you create in a bucket is referred to simply as a folder. So I use the term folder here just to make a comparison to a folder that you may have on your computer. If you look at your desktop right now, you may have a folder which you use to store files in, and then in that folder, you may have a subfolder. Well, with S3, the root level folder, meaning the lowest level folder, is what is referred to as a bucket. Then within the bucket, you can place objects or create subfolders for then which you can put objects in as well. So I'll show you a diagram of what I mean about that in a minute. But now let's move on to objects. So files stored in buckets are referred to as objects. So you have your main folder, then you can have subfolders inside the bucket, and then objects can be your files, whether that is a Word document, an Excel document, it could be a presentation, it could be music files, pictures, movies, any file is just referred to as an object. Next, we should just understand quickly how regions work with S3 buckets. And when you create a bucket, you must select a specific region for it to exist in. That means that any data you upload to the S3 bucket will be physically located in a data center in that region. So best practice is to select the region that is physically closest to you to reduce data transfer latency. If I'm located on the East Coast of the United States, I don't want my personal buckets to be located in the Tokyo region because then the data is going to have to be transferred halfway around the world and back, and that transfer will just take a longer amount of time. 
However, if you are serving files to customers based in a certain area of the world, create the bucket in a region closest to your customers. So again, and I gave this example a few sections ago, where if I have customers in Tokyo that I want to service, then I want to put the files that they are going to access in the Tokyo region so that their latency is lowest as possible. And as a side note, I do want to make mention that some AWS services only work and communicate with each other if they are in the same region. Now, this is more of an advanced feature and it's probably something you don't have to worry about as you're just learning AWS, but it's just something to keep in the back of the mind that if you have some services located in one region and some services located in another, they might not be able to communicate with each other directly. Either way, again, something that's really more advanced or outside the scope of this course, but something I just wanted you to be aware of conceptually. So now let's take a look more at the structure and what I mean in terms of root bucket subfolders and objects. So within S3, if you create a bucket, that is your root folder as I'll call it in terms of making comparison to something you may have on your home computer. Then within the bucket, and you can have multiple buckets, but within one specific bucket, you can just place an object and have that in a bucket, or you can create a subfolder and also have an object placed inside of that subfolder. So this is just kind of some basic organization. I just wanted you to see the difference between a bucket and a folder in terms of its naming construct and how it may be a little bit different than how you call folders on your home computer. So I just want to be very clear about just the slight change in the naming construct. So now let's briefly discuss the pricing and cost for using S3. So first, let's just take a look at this link down here. I've included a link directly to S3 pricing. So if we open that up in another tab and I'll drag that over here so we can look at both. Free tier is available for AWS. And currently what is available for AWS S3 free tier is listed right here, which currently includes five gigabytes of S3 storage and then 20,000 get requests, put requests, so on and so forth. But the important thing to understand is that included in the free tier is up to five gigabytes worth of storage. Now, in terms of how you are charged, you are charged primarily based on storage cost. And this applies to the data at rest in S3. You are charged per gigabyte used and price per gigabyte varies based on the region and storage class. So I'm not gonna go into detail for all of the services in terms of understanding the differences between regions, but you can click here and change the different regions and you will see that prices will change based on region. Now for every service that we're going to talk about for the rest of this course, pricing will vary per region. And I'm not always going to identify that as so, but just, just know that moving forward, using different regions will always have a slightly different cost for different services. So beyond just basic storage and the amount of data that you store in S3, there's also request pricing, and that is moving data in and out of S3. And this is certainly something that you may not have to worry about immediately, but you will be charged based on things like put, copy, post, list, get, lifecycle transition request, data retrieval, data archive, and data restore request. And again, all of that information can be viewed here on the pricing page in terms of the cost for each. So it's always really important to understand the pricing structure of how various things work with not only S3, but other services as well, before you really start to use any AWS service on a large scale. Because AWS, although can be very inexpensive to use for certain features and under heavy usage can become quite expensive. So always be sure to understand what the pricing structure is and what you're going to be charged. But if you are just using S3 to upload some personal files or backups for yourself, most likely you will fall under the free tier usage and won't be charged anything. But be very mindful of pricing when using Amazon Web Services. Okay, now that we were done with the pricing and cost overview, that will conclude this lesson. Thank you for watching. You may now move on.